We're going to find a left endpoint Riemann sum for this function using n equals 3 on the interval negative 3 to 3. To give you an idea of what this means, I'm going to give you a basic sketch. Our function looks something like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split this interval from negative 3 to 3 up into 3 equal pieces. Why 3 equal pieces? Because n equals 3 in this problem. So one of these pieces is going to go from negative 3 to negative 1. Another piece is going to go from negative 1 to 1. And the last piece is going to go from 1 one to three. So we've created what we call three subintervals, and the width of each one of these subintervals is typically called delta x, and in this case the width of each one of these subintervals is two. Now if we wanted a more mathematical way to find what delta x was going to be, we would calculate b minus a over n, where our interval goes from a to b. So in this particular problem our numbers would be three minus negative three over three, which is six over three, which is two, which is the delta x that we got down here. Okay, now we're going to find a left endpoint Riemann sum. That means at the left endpoint of every one of these subintervals, we're going to ask the question, what is the height of this function? And then we're going to use the height of that function to draw a little box, a rectangle technically. Now our next subinterval goes from negative 1 to 1. And at the left endpoint of that subinterval, we ask what is the height of the function, and we draw a rectangle. This function happens to be symmetric, so this y value here is the same as this y value right here. Okay, so we have rectangles drawn for our first two subintervals. Now our last subinterval, we go to the left point, we ask what is the y value, and use that y value to draw a rectangle. Now our Riemann sum is the sum of these three areas. What is the area of this first rectangle? Well, its width is two. We need to find its height. Its height is found using this function. Let's call this rectangle one. Our first area is going to be two times the height of this function at x equals negative three. That's just f of negative three. F of negative 3 can be found by plugging negative 3 into the function. That's going to give us 2 times 1 13th, which is 2 thirteenths. How about rectangle 2? Well, the area of this rectangle is 2. That's the base. The height is the function value at x equals negative 1. So that's 2 times f of negative 1 which if we do just a bit of algebra is going to give us 2 fifths. The area of the third rectangle is going to be the base, that's 2, times the height of this rectangle, which is the function value at 1, which you can see from the picture is going to give you the same results as the area of the second rectangle. Now our Riemann sum is just 1 plus 2 plus 3. And do we want to find a common denominator here? Well, I guess we can. It would be 65. If we add all this up, we are getting 62 60 fifths. And that is going to be the answer. So we can take a look at this whole problem now. And as a bit of a bonus and maybe as a look into your near future, I noticed that this sum, the sum of these three terms here, can be written in a couple of different ways. Each rectangle had a width of 2, so every one of these terms had a 2 on it. So you can pull that 2 out and then just add up the function value. Now that 2, where did that come from? That was just delta x. And maybe we could have called this negative 3x1 and this negative 1x2 and this 1x3. Then if we wanted to write this in a summation notation, we could sum from say i is one to three, and we could write this as f of x sub i times delta x. This delta x of course could be pulled out in front as well. And we're really just playing around here for now, but what if we took this one step further and said, well, f of x is one over x squared plus four. So couldn't I replace this f of x sub i with one over x sub i squared plus four? And then our summation looks like that. Okay, we're gonna start looking at summations that look like this in the next section. I just wanted to give you a little heads up and show you this notation in advance.